Guten Abend. Next round <laughs> with the hot stuff. Wow. Star. Yes. How are you, Stanti? I'm good. How are you, Michael? Uh, like always in the last 10 years, a bit tired, but <laughs> I'm trying <laughs> yeah, to sit, yeah. sit upright. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The usual suspects. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Luda. Manfred. Manfred is already gone, probably. <laughs> Manfred. Deal with us. Uh, I, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, okay, Stanti. A lot of work this time, I can imagine. At this yeah, so time we have to explain year. a little bit um, that, like, so originally we planned to do that um, every other week. And then we realized it's so much work, but it's also for the people who really, really, really like it. If we, if we, we thought like, Uh, that would be something like 350 records we would suggest a year. So that's maybe maybe a little much for the people. There are some people we already know who have told us that they, they're getting most of what we're talking about, uh, if they can. So um, now we're one week late because we decided that we're going to do it every three weeks now. Yeah. And exactly. you guys, you can tell us what you think if you want it. Like, it can change again, of course, but like, we think it's more, yeah, it's more um, Balanced. sustainable that way. Balanced, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Stanti, if you don't have something other to tell the people, let's get right into it. We have 15 titles, so I'd suggest. Yeah. So, so we, start. yeah, we ju just quickly, so we entered really the. Um, You know, that time of the year where it's crazy with um, the amount of releases. It's uh, like, yeah. And uh, this year, it, it feels like really crazy coming from all directions. So, yeah, as usual, we did a mixture of like um, very underground stuff. Some stuff that is not that underground, but that might be under the radar for various reasons. And um, and yeah. And a lot of music from all around the world. Um, and one very important city. We go come to that a little later. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah. Okay, title number one. This is Faten Kanan, who was born in Germany, but uh, she's from, um, she's Sir uh, Palestinian, Syrian, uh, Lebanese, um, And she, she's in Brooklyn nowadays, but she's she's traveling around the world. This is her fifth album, and she's um, she's a singer, um, electronic music producer or composer. Composer. She's a composer, and her music is very has this whimsical quality of uh, really beautiful melodies, often melancholic, but not always, and. Um, This is the yeah. So this is her fifth album. The first one, I believe, is from 2016. So she's been basically producing one album a year so far. Um, the first two ones uh, were the, the first three ones were on indie labels that release stuff like um, um, what, what's his name again? The um, uh, what John Brooks. The guy who, um, ah, I, I need to remember the names, like guys like um, Welcome Robert to my world. Ike, yeah, Robert Aiki, um, Obrello, who did the recent, who does a lot of soundtracks these days for Hollywood, Pi mm. uh, Corner Audio, Dieter Moebius from, uh, from um, uh, Cluster. <laughs> uh, but now she's on Fire Records, which is an, a historical indie label that released Teenage Fan Club. Um, Spaceman 3, right? Yeah, the, early, the earliest Spaceman 3 was on that label. So it's a, a historical British label that has been around since the mid early, early mid 80s. And it was interesting to see that they chose to integrate uh, her to their rooster with their, her previous album, that, which was really, really good, really like maybe her best album. And um, It's also heavily influenced with this minimalism uh, roots, right? Yeah, this, yeah. yeah. Both minimal synth, minimal composition, yeah. and sometimes she will have like a very like you know innocent singing, like something totally virgin. Uh, so there's a huge contrast between these warm machines, synthesizers, and 
is really a beauty and I, I'm happy to, that she continues on Fire Records because it's a good label and her her album there was successful enough that they, they decided, no, we really are going uh, through with her and now she's opening um, for in for big acts, big shows, like she she was doing um, recently, I think she was uh, opening for um, I don't remember, like but a big act, someone like uh, someone like John Cale, basically. I think it was John Cale, to be honest, from the Velvet Underground. Like she, she's kind of in between all these worlds, um, and and the, the, this new album, it's coming uh, out in uh, early January. But they usually don't have a, a huge pressing, so <laughs> there you go. Yeah, if you're interested, this is a, one of those buy now, cry later things, right? <laughs> Although Possibly. When, when, when they really sell out, when they really sell out very fast, and they see, and I think they have a look on it too, that the prices go very high on Discogs, which really mm. often happens with those kinds of titles. Then you sometimes after six, seven, eight, twelve months, you get a smaller repress again, right? And by the way, Faten has an Instagram where she's quite active and it's quite interesting to follow. She shows a lot of um, stuff uh, from around the world that is kind of the build-up, the, the culture that brings forth the music she's making. It, it, it's quite interesting. And she's very approachable as well, like a very nice person. <laughs> The next one looks like a jazz record, Stanti. It is. Uh, the Jazz Clan is um, a very rare album from 1973 that had never been reissued yet. It's uh, from this type of jazz that we call, that is called Cape Jazz, Cape from Cape Town in South Africa. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a style of jazz that was more or less born around dollar brand, Ibrahim, um, what's his name? <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I forget his name, his real original name, Abdullah Ibrahim, who, when he, he did a many of his releases under the name Dollar Brand, a pianist. Cape jazz is usually uh, characterized by music made with instruments that you can carry with you, so that it's often party jazz, like marching bands and stuff like that, but not necessarily. And this one is a studio okay. album that, in, that has like the whole span of the jazz orchestra. There's a lot, lot of players there. It's really joyful um, jazz that it's not it's it's not necessarily spiritual jazz or Afro jazz or it's just like <laughs> yeah, good uh, good uh, party jazz <laughs> in a way which uh, with great musicians that are mostly unknown because they didn't have a career outside of South Africa. And, it's, yeah. it's fascinating. Imagine that they find this over 50 year old record nowadays, or, or no, exactly 50 year old yeah. record. And then, okay, come on, it never has been uh, released on vinyl yet again. Let's do no. this. And uh, yes. it's like, for example, uh, for us collectors, OCD collectors, this record has never been sold on Discogs. There's a lot of people who are after yeah. it. So, this is quite a, an interesting event in the sense that that could open. The door for more reissues from that scene. Mm. Ikin Phil. Ikin Phil has been around for uh, yeah about ten years on records at least. Uh, she's um, she's a, 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 a composer from Turkey, uh, but I think she's in America. Uh, but she was born there. No, I think she still lives in Turkey actually. But she's. Um, her music, you could say, is very close to Grouper, the, um, the female uh, avant uh, shoegaze, <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah, and, and, uh, and also a fertile uh, 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 musician, right? I think yeah. it's her 11th album in, in, yeah. in 11 years, right? Every, again. In, in about 10 years, yeah. And she's yeah. done quite a few yeah. movie soundtracks as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's originally she's a guitar player, and but she's done like like she was playing organ, field recordings, whatever she had access to, and this record is kind of a return to her guitar roots. There's lots of other instruments, but it's more on the melodic side of things. So you could say that you you have this ambient quality of grouper, and mm -hmm. also um, like the 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 most. 
yeah, the, the most uh, atmospheric tracks from bands like My Bloody Valentine, um, Slow Dive, uh, like the, the real early 90s shoegaze from the UK. That, that is, it's kind of in between that and um, Brian Eno, in a way, with a more um, lo-fi, uh, which is part of the, the sound of uh, my, my, these bands, the, lo-fi, the shoegaze bands. Okay. And yeah, so and this is coming out also on on this label, Ellen Scorsdale's agency, which is a, a very interesting label also that because they branch out from like avant pop to projects uh, around Soviet France, Nurse mm-hmm. with Wound, um, B.G. Nielsen, who, who's a big name on Touch Records. So it, it's a very cool label that tries to to bring together more mainstream music and more avant-garde music in a in a very logical uh, pres- uh, like <clears throat> showcase like the fact that the connection between this band are uh, becoming more apparent because they are on the same label and i i think it's a uh, really appreciate uh, to be appreciated and her album is i think it just came out this week uh, uh the dora okay. agora it's and, already out. Uh, oh, okay, I didn't I didn't realize yeah. it. And and uh, maybe you should also mention that, which is of course, in the meantime, a very nice, important, and cool tradition. Upcoming Friday, you will get into this releases again and and play yeah. some of those artists and explain even even more. Yeah, I'll do my usual on, on your channel. On, yeah. yeah. In, on, in the video the description, yeah. in the video description is a link to Stunty's channel. If you haven't subbed him up already, do <laughs> yourself a favor and do it. Simon Crab. Simon Crab is a name that is not, I guess, wouldn't be that known. It's his third album, the first one on vinyl, but he's a very well-known figure in. Uh, industrial music yeah. in the original industrial music as he's the main guy from Bo- uh, Bourbonese Quark, Quark yeah. um, which is a, a, a greetings, very early greetings from, greetings, greetings from vinyl on demand <laughs> <laughs> yeah there you yeah, can get exactly. uh, Bourbonese Quark was a band from like like it was uh, Simon Crabbe and his brother and some other people and uh, they've been around since the early late, late 70s from liverpool originally then um london and and they were championing um they were very political as well they, they, they were like living in squads communities very anarchist anarchist but um the music they were doing were more on the was quite diverse for industrial music it wasn't kind of like the the cliche industrial a lot of it was uh, really influenced by world music tribal drummings and stuff like that but there were uh, also singing so it, it was kind of um you never really knew what you were up for with a bourbonese uh, quote album and i guess because of that even if if they are very legendary for the indus- industrial music fans they are a little more difficult to pinpoint and what is interesting with um, this uh, album invisible cities is that this is new music from uh, Simon Crabbe, who had stopped making music uh, for about a decade, or okay. release at least. And this record is really interesting because it is kind of like a, mm. um, a showcase of many different styles of electronic music that are from now, that are current, through his lens. So you get like ambient, you get dubstep, you get mm. uh, dub techno, you get tribal uh, left field uh, drumming uh, you get some industrial stuff you get like you get I- electronica you get crowd rock it, it's pretty uh, meaty album i think there are 16 tracks and uh, from what i've heard so far it's quite fascinating that this guy actually manages to capture a lot of uh, the zeitgeist of electronic music and uh, because his name is not as, uh, uh, you know, out there as his Bourbonese yeah. called uh, Alias. A lot of people might uh, miss that. It's the sixth release on a new label called Space Ritual that has released some really good 
like um, Balearic, um, electronic, um, crowd, space rockish electronic music. Okay, oh. this is the name you should read. <laughs> <laughs> Mohamed, Mustafa, uh, and Darian with, okay. uh, with Bezad, Vara, uh, Varaste. There are, um, it, it's basically uh, uh, Mohamed uh, Mustafa is the son of um, an instrument builder from Iran. And um, he is, okay. lives in I I Iran, uh, Iran, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, this, so this is contemporary uh, music from Iran. Uh, this was released last year on the cassette. And okay. the cassette went viral because it's so good. It, it is traditional um, music from Iran, but with... And it looks totally traditional, right? Yeah. The old decker, yeah, yeah. So you, you, part, you get what you see in a way. Yeah, but what's interesting is that it is it is traditional music from Iran, but from yeah. someone who has a more uh, a culture that has he basically knows all the the stages of uh, of uh, traditional Ir Iranese music. Um, so, so it is like a I wouldn't say it's a modernized take, but it's a modern take on that music. Yeah, if okay. you catch my drift. But, but on, on, on original traditional instruments, right? Original traditional instruments that have mm. been bettered, like with better okay. knowledge and also custom made for mm. the, the musicians. Because sure. a lot of the music that is being made on these instruments these days is like people finding these instruments like in the um, wherever. But there's not that much new music made with these instruments with new instruments made with new ideas behind them even if you you get the sound but maybe the technique is wider because of that and that uh, that album actually features that and it's the very first album from this guy it's quite amazing that we get this music on vinyl it's it shouldn't be uh, it wouldn't it, have it, happened exactly. yeah. Mm. Yeah. this wouldn't have happened five years ago never no chance no I think. no no chance. Absolutely. Did not. you did you already knew the the audio cassette or did you? Yeah, just... yeah, yeah. I had heard about the cassette. Someone okay. uh, I know who collects cassette was like that was his uh, one of his top five albums from last year, and okay. uh, I just had I, I was just lucky to see um, this being released mm -hmm. that way on vinyl. Cool. And it, it's coming out this week, I think. This one is the one exception that that record came out a couple of months ago, but it didn't get any exposure to the best of my knowledge. It's the third yeah. album from um, uh, from this guy, Emeka uh, Ogba, uh, Ogbo, um, who, from Nigeria, uh, Lagos. And this is his second album on an offshoot label from Osgood Ton, basically the Bergheim in Berlin. And it's Osgood Ton. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Te techno label in a way. Yeah, so they yeah. have uh, this label uh, okay. called Aton. <laughs> mm -hmm. The second al his second album was there; it was good. And this one is on a new label they just launched for him, um, that you can see the name on the screen there. And it's it's so much better than the first album. This this is really one of the most striking albums I've heard of late. Okay. So this is basically like a journal, an audio an audio diary of Lagos in Niger Nigeria. So you get field recordings, but most of it is actual music and party music as well. But with the instruments from there and also added electronic music production values that are yeah. obvious there, but it doesn't sound electronic necessarily. It just sounds modern, very modern, extremely modern actually. And so you, you get like a journey between like the, you know, the, the food market, the brothel, the, the whorehouse, the, the discotheque, the cemetery, like all the rituals of life and with a lot of music. Uh, most of the tracks are normal music in a way. But so the name of uh, the album is the actual exact location, um, geographic location of, uh, of the studio where it was made. Oh, okay. And it, it is like there are many albums, uh, many labels these days that um, give us electronic uh, African music. 
but that also often gives us the image, the traditional right. image we have of electronic African music. This is real African music from today that mm. doesn't care about us in a way. Like this is what they want to do there for their culture well, from an artistic pers perspective. There's no folklore around it and it is very refreshing for their ears. Cool. Düsseldorf. Yeah. <laughs> Once more. Yeah. So Tu Rokokorot uh, is a side project from uh, Kreidler. Kreidler is uh, like a 90s um, crowd rock band. One of the few that really continued the tradition of electronic rock from Germany with the, the crowd rock uh, ideas and aesthetics. And they're from your city. Um, Kreidler um, was like more rock in a way, and Turo Kokorot was more like the. Um, like Kreidler would be Can, and Turo uh, Kokorot would be uh, Amondul Cluster in a way. Yeah. More cluster, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but they, they still have drums, and, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and I believe, I think they don't exist anymore even if they still do music separately. But that project ran its course around the, the end of the 2000s. But they were quite popular, so much so that uh, John Peel from the BBC invited them to do Peel Sessions, his fam famous Peel Sessions. And this is a compilation of the free Peel Sessions they did for him in the late 90s, never before released, with some added uh, live uh, tracks, uh, versions from the same tracks. And uh, it, it is pretty good. It is like you get like kind of a minimal, uh, like if you like Neu. Yeah, I, I guess this is more like Neu actually in many yeah, it's ways. very rhythm based. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And uh, it's on uh, a German label that has been very good for uh, making available a lot of the historical crowd rock that is not the yes. big, big stuff, but still quite big. Uh, uh, and uh, what's good that it's not just an archival uh, label, they also put out new stuff from new artists or current artists uh, from the same tradition. And to make a, uh, to release like a peel session and like that, it just shows that this is not just museum music. This is even if a peel session is an archival recording in a way. Yeah, but still, uh, they, are, they are important, they are great. I, you know, the funny thing. If you wouldn't have mentioned this one to me, I, I would completely have overseen it. And and yeah, one of one of Torokoko's members, uh, 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 Stefan Schneider, is still very active here in the city. You know, he 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 has a great club with some people together, where really really cool stuff happens. And and he's quite a figure still here in Düsseldorf, and he's very active still. What was the name of the club? It's not the Salon des Amateurs. Exactly, Salon des Amateurs. Yeah. <laughs> you know that? Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I was booked there. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah they, he's, he's very active over there mm. still. You have been in Salon des Amateurs. Okay, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, 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 it's this legendary club that is very small. Like, it's yeah. not, there's like maybe 50 people at maximum. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and it's a place where you can do whatever you want. You're not like the. Um, like the fact that it's a, a party, like a gig, you can still do what, like people accept it in that That's place. That's so yeah. cool at, on the, at, at Salon des Amateurs because the resident, the DJ, everybody, also the guests, you can do whatever yeah. you want. And that's mm. cool. That's yeah. so true. It's, it's very uh, small and most of the people you know when you go there because it's not... It's not. It's not Berghain. It's quite no. the opposite of Berghain in a way. <laughs> it's it's almost like a small secret society. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, next one. Yeah, I never heard of this band. What? what, what <laughs> all? Yeah. So this is a band, of course, that uh, I can feature quite often. Um, uh, and this is the last real studio album from Coral because John Balance died before this album was finished. It was originally released as a triple LP, a triple one-sided LPs. So basically uh, three sides of an LP. 
and um, the CD version had a few extra tracks, two, two and it was uh, reissued a few years ago as a double LP. Now they're doing a triple LP version of it with nine unreleased tracks on this, on Infinite okay. Frog. Yeah, which I don't know because, yet. Uh, sorry to interrupt, because mm -hmm. The Ape of Naples has been put out recently, almost recently, but this yeah, is yeah. a different... Okay. Okay. This is a, uh, this is like the definitive version. I mean, there's an inflation of coral reissues yes. these days because yeah. the labels have kind of yeah. figured out a way to do it yeah. legally or semi legally yeah. Yeah. by involving the remain the um, the surviving co members uh, or co producers, and this one is more song based. Out of most of their uh, stuff from the late '90s and 2000s. This is more song based than most of their other output. And it's quite lyrical with um, like small chamber ensemble orchestrations yeah. and, and also the, the typical coil sound. But it will be very interesting to see if uh, these um, other tracks are like cutting floor material or remixes, alternative versions as the one who's behind that release is uh, Danny Hyde, who's the more technical member of Coil. I suspect that these will be fully formed tracks, maybe remixes, but not demos. So it will be interesting. Nanook, the movie? <laughs> no, <laughs> but it, it is... Excuse uh, me a second, Santi, yeah. I have to grab a glass. <laughs> so yeah, Nanook of the North is the famous um, uh, uh, the, the famous movie from a hundred years ago, actually, from yeah. uh, Robert Flaherty, the kind of documentary about the the the, the Inuit uh, Inuk uh, life in the in the Great, Great North. Movie. Great movie. Yeah. That is kind of like the 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 one of the the, the two main founding moments of ethnographical cinema and the, the music of uh, Nanook of the North uh, which is a duo from Poland uh, that uh, do orchestral ambient uh, it's very cinematographic very widescreen music very well produced this is their second album the first one was nice was good this one it takes it on <laughs> quite a few levels uh, cool. up. It is luscious, uh, very, you know, velvetish production, sometimes cold and sometimes warm, sometimes both. It's kind of really the, the, the music of the elements clashing of uh -huh. ice, water, air, uh, and the sudden uh, inclusion of humans in, the, in nature. It yeah. is quite a, a striking release. On the um, on the label De Novali, who it, I think it's a German label, uh, and they put out a lot of modern classical music. Um, mo that's mostly what they do, actually. And this one, uh, yeah, it, it's. Um, but they are also connected to some fashion brands and and, yeah. and, and short short movies, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They 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 are uh, they've been doing. Um, They've been commissioned many installations, museum things, uh, fashion shows. They've been doing of like big brands. Uh, mm. Yeah, they are like um, both like the thinking man ambient label, but uh, also um, very accessible. Like it, it's not. Not that ex it's not really experimental music that what they do. It's more. Yeah, but when you when you listen to it, and I do love that, and you listen to it and say, "Wow, you know, this is the kind of music." Usually, you don't know what it is, but then you see on television or wherever or on YouTube, you watch the Calvin Klein show and the song. It's like, what a great song! And you will never ever figure out which song that was. Never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Ramzi from Canada, Phoebe, uh, Phoebe, I don't remember her last name, but um, when she arrived on the scene uh, of electronic music, 
that was so fresh because there were, she makes a music that is very joyful and she did a series of two EPs that, that were like the graphics were amazing and the music was so good and then she because she got really hyped I guess she was pressured to do a lot of records and they were okay but not that good in my opinion mm-hmm. and this is her first album for quite some time now on the, the Danish label Memory uh, Music from Memory which is basically the biggest ambient new age label of our time. And what she does is basically on one side, you get um, John Hassel. On the other side, you you get like Amazonian music, uh, like the music of like rain, the rainforest, but with rhythms like, kind of tribal and the sounds of frogs so it's kind of um, not funny but like it's uh, it, it brings you a smile because it's uh, yeah. it's clever and surprising and um, yeah it, it's it's going in directions that are quite uh, surprising often there's also a little bit of um, of uh, influence from like cumbia uh, modern different types of modern uh, dance music from around the world but like there's also this really spiritual deep like kind of ambient tr- uh, uh, horn tr- trumpet uh, saxophone sounds that really ground the whole thing together and um, it's quite th- there's something a bit mystical in her music but it's not uh, it, it's quite alive uh, and uh, yeah Stanley what's your opinion I remember when, when in the 80s, this new wave, post-punk, uh, industrial stuff, this, uh, all of a sudden, it got a very strong, maybe you remember, for example, um, Hunting Lodge, Tribal Warning Shot. Yeah. Uh, all of a sudden, there was so much tribal music, and, and it became such a big influence, this tribal aspect. Yeah. I'm I'm always under I'm almost under the impression that we are in a similar situation right here. That this tribal aspect nowadays goes more or, or, or has almost a comeback. Yeah, but the stuff that you were talking about is tribal, more ritual. This is yes. more like this is not dark. This is not. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, mm-hmm. This is more playful. This is very playful. Yeah. But sure, there, there's, always a, there's also this great German producer called, um, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Let me put out his records. Damn yeah, names, uh, right? <laughs> Don't DJ. Um, okay. uh, from Germany, I think from around where you are, actually, who really does this like polyphonic, polyrhythm, uh, um, electronic music that, that is, has become really popular. But not everyone manages to do it well because if you do it too loopy, then it sounds fake and uh, you have to mm. do it in a way that still feels or- organic in a way, even if you use machines. And she does that very, very, very well. So we already talked uh, in a previous, um, I think it was the first time, the first or second um, show we did about uh, the new releases. Oh, uh, yeah. Of Bichin Bajas, uh, Bajas this, uh, it's a trio from, um, from the US. And this record, it, like they just released uh, a, their first studio album in a long time. And, uh, and it's pretty good. But Stati, before was... we get into the record, please, one second. Yeah. What an amazing cover art. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. I love this jacket. The jacket alone is for me a yeah. reason to get it. It's, it's perfect. <laughs> and if you read the title of the album, if you know a little bit about music, you understand the joke and what it's yeah. about. And it's such a great concept. Yeah. Basically, they are taking the switch on Bach concept from Wendy Carlos to Walter Carlos, ba- making Moog versions of uh, classical music, but they're doing that with Senra. It's <laughs> <laughs> amazing. <laughs> And they of are from course, the, the US, it's not right? yeah. bias is, is a US combo, right? Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. they're on Drag City from Chicago. Um, this is um, kind of a sneak release. It's uh, something that I think they did 
um, to support like a, um, a foundation that is helping uh, life of prisoners in uh, in America or something like that. But it's um, okay. it it wasn't announced. It just popped up like that. It's it feels more spontaneous, which is quite cool since they hadn't released anything in qu quite a few years now. And this one is. I, I was I instantly fell in love with what I heard from it, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I like Sunra. I'm not the biggest fan, but uh, there are some Sunra records I love. Um, and he, he was he's had he's been doing so many different things because he started in the 30s, doing the jazz from the 30s, then the jazz from the 50s, yeah. and then in the in the early 70s he started to do Sunra jazz, his own thing, totally like. Uh, that could be very repetitive, that had lots of electronic keyboards, but still quite minimal. And this is just everything from Sun Ra, but through, but basically how Sun Ra would have sounded if he did music with Terry Riley or mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Philip Glass or something like that. But Terry Riley, really, the keyboard, the organs, and it's quite, uh, yeah, it's clever, it's joyful. And it's a very, very cool package. Yeah, package is perfect. Already <laughs> out? When when does it come out? No, uh, no, it's coming out soon, but it's not out yet. Okay. It's coming out before the end of the year. Okay. Mm. Uh, Patrick Coley, um, for those who don't know him, you know him. <laughs> He's... <laughs> um, yeah, well, he, he's uh, um, he died in 1982 from AIDS, um, but he was extremely prolific. He did a, three albums under his name that were released in the early, late 70s or 80s of that music from New York that was called High Energy, like a very electronic type of disco music, but that could be also quite different like he, there was a lot of room for creation there and um he did soundtracks for movies that sounded nothing like that also soundtracks for porn gay movie, gay porn movies um that sounded also completely different but also interesting and um and he is also the guy who did the version everyone knows of i feel love from donna summer like if you ever dance to I feel love in a in a discotheque in a club at a party. That is his version, um, not the original Giorgio Moroder uh, version. Okay. I mean, you prob you might have heard it. It's not vastly different, but he made it more exciting, uh, adding more like dub production over it. And uh, he that's but, but funny, as, as so often in life, more exciting but less successful. <laughs> No, no, it was very successful. It was very, very okay. successful. Oh, yeah, but yeah, come yeah, on, they, not like, like the Moroda version. Oh, they sold more singles of that uh, on uh, really? in the eighty. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was a huge, okay. huge hit. Hit. Okay. And basically, he's been. He, he did also some the electronics on some um, some uh, rock post punk <laughs> bands like Indoor Life, and that's how uh, I knew him originally, and that's how he got re, uh, rediscovered. And uh, that label from uh, San, San Francisco or Los Angeles, I'm not sure, uh, Dark Entries, which is a great, great label. Yeah, they've um, they've started to reissue some of his stuff, and they got access to his uh, vaults, to his oh. archives, and they yeah. put quite a few really good packages of either his soundtrack work, and th this one is quite interesting because they haven't done that yet. This is more of his kind of experimental disco stuff uh, that it, all wow. these tracks are totally Nadine from Soul Disco will love it probably yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe probably she knows you will play him on, on Friday on your stream you will play some yeah yeah I'll probably play, play some Patrick Coley yeah yeah cool mm. Tyondal Braxton the son of uh, Anthony Braxton probably uh, the biggest name in uh, American free jazz uh, outside of Ornette Coleman Uh, I mean, Anthony Braxton is free jazz incarnate, but he's so much more because he was also modern classical, mo modern composition, improvisation, electronic music. But at the core of it, he is um, um, a jazz player. And his son um, got famous uh, because he started the band Battles, 
battles uh, featured yeah. members from most like the biggest hardcore post hardcore rock bands from the 90s even some early late 80s uh, people and they're still active and still do a very interesting version of like a mixture of like power post punk rock uh, hardcore uh, that can be quite funky um, at the same time and Anthony um, Tyondai Braxton was the the founder of the band the singer etc and he he left them after two albums and he's done some work but not that much he did an album for Warp and he kind of disappeared and this is his comeback which is an album um, influenced by Akira the the manga but that is like about how um, the mind can create so much and control so many things at the same time and either for the sake of creation or for the sake of chaos. So this is a mixture of electronic music, of orchestral music, a big orchestra, choir music. And uh, he had access to like the best venues of the world, the, some of the best um, musicians in the world. And then there was the, like 10 months or so of mixing it together in a great studio. And um, it, it's, there's, no, there's only been like a few excerpts of it online that you could hear. And it's, it's like a, it's an experience. It's a sonic experience that is, it's massive. It's not minimalist at all. It's, but <laughs> sometimes it gets quiet. And sometimes you get like, as you were in a, in a huge, in the biggest storm ever of <laughs> sound of music. <laughs> and uh, so, so this is going to be quite interesting to to hear the full result. I, I have I have no doubt that at the very least this is going to be interesting and challenging. But it's not uh, adversarial. It is uh, music that is like very stimulating. It's mm -hmm. it's not. It's probably not going to be music you put in the background. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. <laughs> okay. So this is the um, A3O's latest album. They've been around for quite some time now. Uh, it's the um, it's a Lebanese um, improv, jazz, rock, uh, electronic music. They, they are great musicians, like guitar players, horn players. And it's um, like two years ago, um, the, the one of the members of uh, this band, um, what's his name again? Uh, 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 ah. Raed Yassin did one of my favorite albums of uh, the 2020 21 and um, this is um, they put out quite a lot of records uh, reg very regularly because they play live all the time they're in they playing in big festivals around the world um, because they are great musicians but they also are uh, Lebanese musicians so there is they import like traditions of Lebanese jazz Lebanese traditional music but in a very modern and also modernized uh, fashion. And so it kind of sounds like you will hear Don Cherry in this. You will hear Coil in this. You will hear John Fahey in this. You will hear um, just it's global music in a way. And uh, it, it is... Uh, very very charming music they they had an album out uh, earlier this year with alan bishop from the sun city girls uh, which is like uh one of the most important uh, figure in american music in the past 30 years for or 40 years for getting american music to open up to all other influences in, including american influences that are not traditionally talked about like deep bluegrass and stuff like that so th this is just a, a record that will be very like you get some of the best musicians technically with some of the most open minds from um that are not too tainted by the the western world of form uh, formating one question because uh, uh winston just uh, wrote that mm -hmm. he thinks i i, I know i should go into call ape of naples Good mm -hmm. record to start with Coil. Uh, many people think it's uh, uh, say that it's their favorite, 
And um, I kind of understand. For me, it's not. It's Carl had so many uh, areas in the uh, world. We're, we're talking uh, yeah, one yeah. meter in your record shelf, right? Yeah. yeah. But I would say um, because it's their last studio. Um, mm. For me, it's a bit special. I can't put it on the first place, but it's actually quite good because you 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 get them at the top of their uh, their capacity. When okay. Coil started, John Balance wasn't a singer. He was the guy who sung in Coil, but he wasn't a singer. Um, on that album, he's probably the best singing he's ever had. And uh, so, in that regard, yes, yes, and um, it's quite diverse as well. There, there are. Um, it's not one style of music that album. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, yeah, it, it rarely is with chord. They, yeah. they have a lot of. Yeah. Okay, last one for today, but absolutely a highlight. Yeah. <laughs> so John Kale from the Velvet Underground um, hasn't uh, released anything for ten years now. So it's kind of his return album. But like, how many more will there be? It's not like he's <laughs> he's not getting younger. <laughs> But when you look at the lineup of that record, it's he's actually getting, at least he's living in the present because there are tracks with actress the uh, in British electronic music post club uh, te post tech yeah. post club techno producer. Uh, there are tracks, yeah, and he's great. There's tracks with Animal Collective, with Laurel Hello, with soul singers, rappers, and and. It's still a, a John Cale album with like his great piano uh, compositions. I, and when I say great, actually, I'm not a fan of a lot of the stuff he done. But this one, I thought like this is he's stepping up. Uh, like there are great deep piano tracks on this one, and uh, it's gonna get a, a regular release. But we wanted to talk about this because th there's um, this is the limited edition. There's only one. There's only two versions: the regular one and this one. And this is the only one that will feature the bonus seven inch with a track with um, Tony Allen, the drummer from Fela Kuti. And they're only going to do 1,000 copies of this one. This is will very, be... very, very few, I think. If yeah. it comes to John Kell, 1,000? For that's... John Kell, like 1,000, that's like nothing. Yeah. 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 And there's a lot, like, there's like a whole book with it. It's a really good package. So it's not like our typical more underground stuff we talk about or the non-western stuff but like that edition like will fly and it's coming out in early january or in mid january so mm -hmm. it's still available but it won't be for uh, pretty thank soon you, uh, i'd say that's a nice comment thank you very much <laughs> yeah post, thanks to uh, post radio music journalism study <laughs> Well, that's my background. I I, uh, I used to um, be the editor of a music magazine, and I had my radio show. But the the way we do it here, uh, we, like we can do so many different things, you and I, Michael, and and we have no pressure from anything. Uh, <laughs> we don't need to sell <laughs> issues of anything. But uh, if you guys help us, uh, that's that's great because the more you, if you like it, the more you support us, the more we can do that. And um, and we mean this as a form of it's like a, a program, a TV pro a program where we talk not necessarily we go deep into the music because I guess it's difficult to do that nowadays uh, with yeah. But I think you you have you on your channel, and that's why I so strongly mm -hmm. recommend your channel with your with your music streams. You you found. A, a fantastic way of doing it. I mean, that's that's a per you 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 play the music, you talk with the people. Your streams on Friday are that's that's unbelievable cool. Yeah, and the, like the sound is not great on that streams because all is done that way. It will improve. Uh, yeah, you can of course improve, but uh, uh, seriously, Stanti, uh, uh, I think only very very few people uh, uh, watch music on youtube because that sounds so great i don't want to be a snob yeah. but, <laughs> but w the thing is that like when you watch these streams look at them as uh, reference <laughs> points like you you still have to do some of the work <laughs> you come and get exposed yeah. to it we discuss it or you watch it and then go and find like <laughs> 
proper videos of it or find the records. That's the point. And by the way, to for um, someone said, uh, I think it was uh, Winston or Boogie. Uh, right when we finish with it, we will put the list uh, yeah. in the description of the video. But now, uh, if you guys have any questions or if you, you want to go on and talk about all that, we're here for you. Exactly. We know we, we take some time for the little discussion. Yeah. Next week is a big week, Stanti. Yeah. Stanti, <laughs> and, me, is, uh... Stanti and me, we will meet here in Düsseldorf. Stunty will stay in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck and, you. <laughs> and, and then we go to Ten Bosch, to the largest yeah. record fair in the world. Yeah. And ba basically we go there for the, the, reopen the reopening of it after COVID. They had one uh, edition in uh, the spring, which was kind of the, the, re the, the true reopening, but it was yeah. kind of a trial. Like they were, they were testing things in a new venue, and this one is the big one, and we're gonna be there for you guys, and uh, it's gonna be quite interesting. A lot of what we're gonna be do, the, doing there will cross over with the original Buyers Club as well. Um, but um, if any of you guys are there or around there, give us a shout uh, so we, we, we can start. meet you. And, and have a drink now and and of course we will do probably several live streams a mm. day from if possible if technical possible i think so uh, from this from this uh, fair so that yeah. we can show you that you can get an impression of the of the size of it it, it must be unbelievable overwhelming probably yeah and then of course what well, Stanti uh, just said it. We will meet with with some dealers for the original buyers club, so that we have have more more content and more dealers in that regard. So next week will be a very special and very different week. We will go there on Friday and Saturday, and of course we will do streams in the evening. We sh we show what we we've managed to get over there and and probably. Yeah fun stuff to uh, to present yeah because the program is also to show you guys the experience of what it is to be like an attendant to these fairs because we'll be looking for records of course also it's it will be yeah. work uh, but in many different ways and different levels it will be fun hopefully <laughs> and it will be exhausting and i will get to listen to michael's uh, sound system also yeah, well, I, I, that's, this will be quite, quite interesting. Uh, 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 what you say, yeah, yeah. That, that will be fun. <laughs> um, uh, how do and we it's know? Also, it's also joy because, like, we've been uh, ah. doing videos together for like almost three years now, like two and a half years on and off, and uh, so it's the first time we meet in real life. So this is uh, quite yeah. cool. It is. Uh, um, everything went fine. Uh, it, it measures. I, I, I think I've I've seen yours, by the way. <laughs> Everything, yeah. Every because he's asking the orders or the requests got through with an. We will talk about that the Wednesday in the in the OGB. Uh, um, there is some title that is so popular, and this is to me a huge surprise. You will all be surprised about one title. I would have never ever thought that this title is so popular. But I love it that it is. Um, Adele. Stunty will be rocking Adele full album. Yeah. Of <laughs> course. And he asked me, and I will do it. He also wanted to listen to the new ABBA. <laughs> you know what? Actually, I will soon, prob very probably soon meet Benny from ABBA in person. You will? Yeah. Why? What happened? What have you done? <laughs> 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 well, there's some uh, business um, okay. related things that might actually be Connected with you as well. You. Okay, yeah, okay. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, you, you, meet, you meet him, I, I meet her. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we'll see, but like, I don't know who's getting the best deal of this. <laughs> okay, now let's get serious. It's Damn it. <laughs> no, no, but uh, yeah, it, it's, it's quite exciting. Uh, Benny from ABBA is uh, he's the maybe the biggest celebrity in Sweden for Sweden. 
Of course. And, uh, uh, yeah. He's in, uh, into many things, many businesses. He, so, yeah. And have some proximity. I met him once uh, before, and uh, now there's another opportunity for that. That uh, is more business. <laughs> Stunt, you have every uh, any public image limited? I guess so. <laughs> that's um, that's usually one of the features of my show. You you guys ask me about something, and yeah. I just do this, and yeah, here it is. <laughs> I think in those two boxes are around 12,000 records, right? <laughs> no, behind you in those scales. <laughs> it's unbelievable what you put out there. Yeah. yeah this is the original. Like... Cool. Wow. But, but Winston, this is a very interesting question for me because I don't have any pill anymore. And why? Because before I went into these originals, I've always waited for a decent repress which of course doesn't happen in, in most cases, but you never know when it's happened. And now that, that uh, uh, this treasury of, 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 of OGs has opened, it's so beautiful. And pill is on, on its way. I got some originals. And that's one of the beautiful aspects of originals they are there you don't have to wait and you don't have to go on your knees and say please 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 give us a repress of what whatever title they are there and that's so cool that's so cool by the way when we go to the fair we will give you also like some of our techniques some of our tricks to to do good in the fairs like that because i see uh bo is talking about another fair in essen and um there's quite a few things that, like, uh, whenever I'm in a record fair and I do my stuff, I see people uh, who are a bit surprised about this thing. So we'll we'll show you a, a few things that can be very helpful. And, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, wait a second. What, what, uh, Abolo. Ah, okay. Here yeah. he is. The biggest Europe record fair on one day term will be in Essen Group 6 of November next Sunday. It's the biggest in Europe, Bodo? No, it's the biggest one day fair. Ah, okay. Biggest one day fair. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I've talked to a dealer here in Germany. I found another interesting German dealer and so I contacted him. And uh, he also will be there. You, you will see him on, on, on a video. We go through his stuff. And it's it's unbelievable. He carries over twenty three tons of vinyls. <laughs> twenty three tons yeah. for this fair, which is illegal, by the way. <laughs> yeah, no, he takes more. He takes more than one car stunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's going to be an adventure. And by the way, for you guys who who are here and who like this. Um, this is very helpful when you like, when you subscribe to us, but even more that you can do now is sh share this on your own social medias to, to show that we're doing something. Yeah, someone was saying that we're kind of doing our own brand of journalism on YouTube. And um, because the, the more people understand that what we do here is uh, it's not that experimental, it's not that... Uh, weird or obscure. Then uh, yeah, but what's uh, the whole credit for this show goes yeah. to you. I just <laughs> it's here. Yeah, you do all the work. You do the leg work. You do the listening, and you are the the unbelievable unicorn of an expert in this is this area of music. Of course, I'm also quite. Uh, 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 um, I know this stuff a bit, but you are here. I'm here, and and so this is your. This is your show, and and you deserve all the credit for it. So there's yeah, no yeah, but uh, we it's like the fourth time we do it that way. Yeah, it will like the more we grow, like the um, the more <laughs> it will become organic as well. Yeah. and it, it it already kind of is. Like if you guys have seen the four shows, uh, there's been progress every time. Uh, new innovations uh, in the presentation, some that you see, some that you don't see. And mm. um, yeah, it, it is uh, quite fun to do now. 
Kurz Rüstwurf. Ich kann nicht Wait, uh, um, please, thumbs up or thumbs down on the new Revolver Mono versus UK Original Press. I really need to know before I buy. Um, yeah, the, the, can I ask the, you a question about that, Michael? Because you, you've got it. The, the, yeah, yeah. So there is one reason that is in, in, there's one beyond the quality of the song. There is one aspect of this reissue that is all, that could be interesting, which is it's an archival um, uh, issue yeah. because there are all these versions with it that are unreleased. So if you're into that, then of course it's interesting. Then we get Michael's opinion on these uh, demos, unreleased versions, etc. Do you, what do you think of them? What, what did you? I think this this is very very interesting. You know, in, in the, the whole the whole gameplay of those kinds of box sets, and especially in that case, you have the book, you have the demos, you you have you have this this talking. Uh, things you have the development i really do love that then you have a very 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 decent mono pressing and an interesting remix so the whole package overall especially probably on black friday i, I would recommend getting that when it comes to what is the best the better sounding version then i That I don't have a doubt. This original pressing uh, with a, with a, 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 a special mic uh, version of, of the last song. This is spectacular. This and is... you and I, when you got it, we we had a discussion about it. It's not mm -hmm. like we already exchanged thought about it. And mm -hmm. but so the, the I guess for someone like me, like I agree with you, like uh, with the, the the sound, but. The, the, if you want to get uh, the, the decision, the, the turning point, if getting this or not, is these other alternate versions, um, demos or whatever, do you think that after you listen to them once, you will return to them? Or is it just a box that sits on the shelf? Is that a legit question, Stanti? Because I have it and I can watch it and then I see it and then I... Even when I see it, I am remembered. I get a, how, how what's what's on it. Yeah. Maybe sometimes without needing to listen to it, but it, yeah. ah, oh yeah, oh yeah, there is this great version, and yeah, and the book, the pictures, the feeling. That's, in my opinion, one of the strongest assets when it comes to physical media. Yeah, me too. Like uh, I've said that many, many times that yeah. records are totems. But yeah. if for the people who don't necessarily have that kind of relationship like to the objects in, in itself, do you think that these versions, like when you know the original songs which you and that you love them, and which is the reason why, why you want more of it in a way, do you think, and I don't say do you really think, I ask you, do you think <laughs> um, that there will be an urge to revisit them regularly or you will always go back to the actual album how it was because that's the essence of it i will if you 100 this is an, this is an easy question now mm. when i want to listen to the album and i have the og i now will always go back to the og yeah or for example like with the stand up jethro tal where i preferred the the 45 rpm i will go back to it or or you know When you go back to stuff, it's yeah. always an occasion. You 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 come next Thursday, and there is a good chance that I say, "Come on, let's listen." Here is in my in my opinion, there's an example. Let's listen to the remaster and let's let's listen to the original. And here's an example why I think that the remaster is better. That this those are occasions occasions when you go back. You know, you get yeah. a visitor. You want to talk about something. You you get ah remember when we. Uh, that was this record let's hear it those are the occasions where in my opinion you really go back yeah <laughs> yeah so uh, i don't know if you got your answer uh, <laughs> uh, peanut gallery but uh, that is our answer at least one of the possible answers you know yeah. and and again 
uh, if we talk tomorrow, maybe we we, we find a different angle, or, or it's yeah. those things are not set in stone in a way. Mm. You know, uh, last week I did that video about. I mean, it was objectively about the Bill Evans box set and uh, William Basinski, yeah, but it was also much. the underlying theme was about desi uh, des desirability of mm -hmm. records, box sets, mm -hmm. and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And I guess that is a question with that box set as well. The desirability, like it's coming out now and everyone is talking about it now, um, wants to get it now. What does that mean? Like when, because if you just manage to take one step back and look at how you usually um, do your collecting, how does it differ? How, how is it similar? And I guess that your own answer to your question will you will find it there like when you you think about what you already have how you got it why you got it and yeah and also I, I mean it's yeah it's dangerous to, to say in a way nowadays but you know sometimes i really like to be surrounded by my records yeah. sometimes i just enjoy it when it's ah my records that's oh, cool. I, yeah. I can tell you that i love that feeling i don't know how, how is it with you in the gallery don't you enjoy sometimes just looking at your records and those are my records cool <laughs> there's that and there's also that the fact that they keep the warmth inside also <laughs> <laughs> it, it's funny also because uh, i used to have all my records very organized and now it's there is some kind of organization there and there, but it's I like to have it kind of deorganized de because uh, like yeah. that keeps the joy of like discovering the yeah. records within your own collection. Yeah. And like there's different types of joys at different moments. At one point, I had all my records sorted by color. So it was <laughs> like <laughs> that's tempting. That's tempting. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, yeah, it's oh. just to keep your, your collection alive around you, in a way. Yeah, it, it's it's an archive, it's a library, it's 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 a lifetime achievement. It's it's a lot. The collection is a lot. Uh, not a lifetime curse rather than achievement, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you, you, um, we see us next week, Stanti. Yeah. Let's let's see how that works out. Maybe we don't talk after that to each other anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, for the people who don't know, we already talk all the time about football already. Yeah. So, yeah. and you know, on the Friday night after the first uh, day, there's a Lyon game. <laughs> okay, you can watch that here. I will do something that makes sense in that time. <laughs> But maybe, <laughs> but maybe we are too tired to to do yeah, anything. It's, it's like, that yeah, this probably, will be, probably. This will be. We'll see. Yeah. But so, guys, yeah, yeah. I hope uh, um, this was interesting. Um, we'll put um, of the records in the description. If Michael finds, he'll put some affiliate links if, if he gets the time. I will. And um, yeah. so, uh, everything you can do that uh, you think can be helpful for that, we welcome that as usual. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll do the stream on Friday. And um, cool. yeah, we'll do that again in three weeks, two weeks after the fair. Exactly. Then we have we have uh, the fair next week. Then we have the OGB uh, mm -hmm. uh, meeting. And yeah, around that time. Yeah. Thanks for doing this, Stanti. See you. Thanks, guys. Wait. <laughs>